CFS Live, we are back here again having church online. And I'm so excited that we're ending this series called Level Up, where our students from different campuses are the, the ones that are preaching the messages. And tonight we're just ending it off. And it's a fire one, let me tell you. It's powerful, uh, just as they all have been powerful. But hey, also, we got rally coming up next Friday. And I know some of you guys are like, man, I'm not able to make it. Or, man, I don't live in the area. Maybe I moved. Or maybe I want my friends to go or my family to go, but they don't live in Miami. I got good news for you. Good news is we're going to be live streaming the whole rally, a whole online experience of rally on here so make sure you subscribe make sure you send a link to somebody and you share it to your friends or your family that are not able to make it they gonna be able to make it because we're gonna live stream it here and we're a church that's generous and i love that i'm able to be generous why because god has been so generous to me so if you want to give i encourage you text cf give to 31 31 31 lastly we have a Rocket League tournament coming up. Come on. Me and my team, we ready. So if you're saying, man, I want to be a part of this Rocket League tournament, let me tell you, it's going to be a reward to it too. So make sure you coming in hot with you and your team. But man, I want you right now to go on our Instagram, CF Students, and I want you to send us a DM, slide in our DMs, right? With saying, hey, I want to join the tournament. Me and my team or me and my friends, we want to be in it and we'll lock you in. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great week. Rally's coming up. We got online rally. We got this Rocket League tournament uh, coming up. This Rocket League tournament coming up. It's going to be powerful. But hey, make sure you guys turn your volume up right now because we're going to get ready to worship. And we're going to end it off with a powerful word. CFS Live, I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys again next Friday. Enjoy. You're indescribable in every way. Search me out and now I'm caught up in your face I heard my name across the ocean You pulled me closer, the current chased You showed me life, a new horizon A silver lining, a brand new day And I'm like, oh, I can't find the words
There's a simplicity, humility to the way you love me, and honesty, a purity. God, you make it easy. No special words or formulas could ever win you over, for your love is undeserved. Even when I can't see clearly, somehow you still make it easy. Your love's uncomplicated. You love me just the way I am. So I stand before you. I'm totally surrendered with open hands and open hearts. Jesus, have your way in me. Have your way in my brokenness, my loneliness, and the secrets you see, my deepest thoughts, my hidden wars. God, you see right through me, even when I'm overthinking. Somehow, you still love me. Complicated, you love me just the way I am. So I stand before you. I've totally surrendered with open hands and open heart. Jesus, have your way. Sing over and over, I love you, it never grows old. And how could I tell you enough that I love you, I love you, Lord?
Yo, what up, CFS? Knows you joining us online. Man, if you've been with us these past couple of weeks, you know we kicked off a brand new series called Level Up. And this whole series is all about us highlighting how God has been moving in our students right here at the CFS ministry. And so right next to me, I have the very own Kami representing Homestead. Let go. We are excited for what God has to say. So I want everybody to stand on your feet and give that ridiculous CFS welcome to our very own Kami. Thank you, Pastor Al. Thank you, thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to CF Students. As Pastor Al said, my name is Kami. I serve as a small group director in Homestead, and it is such an amazing pleasure to be here and be part of the Level Up series. So before we start, I would love to be able to read the Word of God with you. So if you could please stand up and open your Bibles to Titus 3, 4 through 5. And it says, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of generational and renewal of the Holy Spirit. You may sit down. So recently I learned a really interesting fact about butterflies that I actually didn't know at all. Did you know that butterflies can see ultraviolet colors? Not only can they see ultraviolet colors, but they also have those same colors on their wings. And humans can't actually see it. But the cool thing is, is that only butterflies can see it. And the reason that they have that is so that they can see each other when they're migrating from place to place. But caterpillars don't have that. They can't see the color and they don't have it anywhere on their body. Only butterflies do. And this happens because of the transformation that they do from caterpillar to butterfly. In that same way, we have that same transformation in Christ. And that happens to us when we go from being not saved to, you know, asking Jesus to be our Savior and becoming Christians and doing what the Bible tells us to do. But you might be wondering, how can I become a new creation in Christ? Or even if you are a new creation in Christ, maybe how can I do it correctly? Well, I'm very happy that you asked. <laughs> and this is what this teaching is going to be about. So... I have titled this message, If You're a Butterfly, Why Are You Still Crawling? If you are taking notes, which you should be taking notes, open your Bible app, there's a note app there, the note app, the paper and pen, you can take notes anywhere. Remember, the title of this message is, If You're a Butterfly, Why Are You Still Crawling? It is so incredibly fascinating how an animal that could only crawl for a a, a good period of time becomes an amazing, beautiful animal that can fly. So the main idea of this message is who you are determines what you do. Let me repeat it. Who you are determines what you do. So I'm going to give you three points today in this message that I would like you guys to write down. So the first one, let's start by opening our Bibles to Titus 3, 1 and 2. And it says, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, to focus, perf to show perfect courtesy towards all people. The first point is, you will walk like Christ if you are in Christ. Paul, which is the person, the apostle, who actually write this book of Titus, tells Titus to tell the Christians in that specific time, that they need to act more Christ-like. And the reason is, is because they were fighting a lot. They were, you know, not being good brothers and sisters to each other. And it says here in verse 1 and 2, to be submissive to authority, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to not gossip, to not quarrel, and to be gentle and courteous. And they weren't doing that. And Paul tells Titus this to remind not only them, but we can also look at this verse and remind ourselves that we should be acting more Christ-like. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we have to change from our old ways, from our caterpillar ways. We need to change to our butterfly ways. Jesus, you know, died on the cross to give us eternal salvation. And when he gave us that gift, we are able to receive it, but we have to change. If we don't change, then what's the point? We, there's no difference. We have to, you know, go to church, pray, do our devotional, act like Christ. And of course, works don't save us. That's not how it works. But these things help us become 
just like Christ and help us become closer to Christ, which is what the Bible calls us to do. And the caterpillar doesn't become a butterfly overnight. And that happens with our own salvation. Yes, we were unsaved once and we didn't know about Christ. But when we're in that cocoon, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, when we turn in our new path of life, we have to start acting like that. And, you know, the butterfly doesn't crawl. The butterfly only flies. The caterpillar doesn't fly either. But we can't pretend to be butterflies and crawl as if we are able to do that. That's not how that works. We have to change from our old ways. But remember the main idea. Who you are determines what you do. So for the second point, let's go to Titus 3.3. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to several passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by one another and hating one another. This right here is a description of what our life is without Christ. Point number two is, you will walk like the world if you are in sin. As these two verses, uh, this verse tells us, there's so many descriptors in this verse that tells us foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to passions and pleasures, doing evil, hating people. All these things describe people that are living in their old ways, that are people that are, aren't Christian. That's what we used to be. Or maybe that's you right now. Maybe you are in that whole mess of this world, that sinfulness of this world, that darkness of this world, but you want to change and you want to become a new creation. These are the things that we have to stop doing. When we become a new creation in Christ, we can't act like the world. Remember, we have to remember that this place, this world is our temporary home. We're renting a house here. We aren't home buyers. We're just renting a house, but later on, Later after we die and we, you know, the eternity, that's our home. That's where we're going to reside with God. But we can't act like, oh, no, it doesn't matter if, you know, I go smoke weed with my friends or if, you know, I watch porn for like four hours. No, those things matter. Those things aren't what we should be doing. Those things are of this world. And we have to completely change. And, you know, God gave us the gift of grace and He's given us that to be able to, you know, change as a person. And we have to remember that. I go from crawling as a caterpillar to flying as a butterfly. And we have to remember to fly as a butterfly. We are not slaves to sin anymore. And we can't act that way. You have to remember that when we are in Christ, we act completely different. And my mom always tells me, which I used to be annoyed when my mom would tell me this, is tell me who your closest people are and I will tell you who you are. And that is holds so much truth because think about it. The kids that are going to smoke weed or, you know, going to do drugs, they, their closest friends are probably doing the exact same thing. Pretty sure that a kid that smokes weed isn't hanging out with a kid that is saved and has uh, focuses on their family and does good things. No, that's not how that works. But you have to change those friendships if you need to change those friendships. Yes, that's hard. If you go from, you know, if maybe you're smoking weed, maybe you're doing things you shouldn't be doing and you need to change those friends, be self-aware and be like, wow, maybe I do need to change those friends. And look for friends here at church. That's what we are. The church, are we're here to help each other on that new path that we're going on. Again, it's not easy. In the Bible itself, it says that being a Christian is sometimes even harder than not being a Christian. But that's what we're all here for, to help each other, to support each other, and be that foundational group of people that will help us in our path. But remember, who you are determines what you do. So for point number three, let's go to Titus 3, 4 through 7. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of generations and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Point number three is... God transforms our lives. Last week, Carlos talked about grace, and I want to talk about it a little bit. Grace is an undeserved gift. Jesus died on the cross, 
and he gave us grace as a gift. You know, when you go to a birthday party, you don't expect someone to give you a gift. You get the gift and you appreciate the gift. Pretty sure you don't like throw it and just stomp on it and you're like, okay, thanks, I guess, for the gift. No, you don't do that. You accept it and you cherish it. The same thing we have to do with grace. We have to cherish that gift that God has given us. But the way we can cherish it is by becoming more like Jesus. We have to become more like Jesus. We have to strive to have a relationship with him. When you have a relationship with someone, you talk with them, you want to hang out with them, you try to do as many things as possible with them. That's what we need to do with God. It's not like, oh, God is over there. Yeah, I guess I'll pray to him. Like, I don't really know if he's there or not. No, that's not how it works. God is giving us a great a grace and giving us that gift, and we need to accept it and act accordingly. And that's where it comes in that we need to pray, we need to do our devotional, we need to go to church. God has transformed us from that ugly, ugly caterpillar. Obviously, none of us are ugly, but I'm just saying the caterpillar is ugly to that beautiful butterfly. And we need to change. We need to become that butterfly. And I know I keep reiterating it, but it's so important because I think that a lot of us forget that, oh, I can just come to church and everything's fine. I'm just going to come. I get to hang out with some people. I get to, you know, sometimes eat or I get just, I don't have to be home. But that's not what church is. You're sitting here to learn about God, to become more like God. And that's the importance of it. And remember, we're all here to help each other. We're, we're all living life for the first time as well. So we're here to help each other, to, you know, be a support system for each other. And that's what we're here to do. But we have to do our part when it comes to our relationship with God. But our, the final thought I want to leave you guys with is three things. Surrender, strive, and seek. So when you surrender, you surrender your life to God and let him make you a new creation. Let him bring you from that caterpillar to that butterfly. Then you strive. You strive to be that new person in Christ. You strive to become more like Christ. And you seek. You seek for that help. You seek for others that are on the same journey as you. You know, our sm small group leaders, small groups in general, CF student directors, even CF campus pastors, everyone here is here to help you. And even me as a small group leader, I have other small group leader friends that are here to help me when I'm in need. We're all doing this for the first time. So don't forget that. So remember to not crawl because God has changed you into the beautiful butterfly so you can fly high. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing, wonderful day that you have given us. Thank you for the amazing opportunity that I get to share the word of God with others, Lord. Help every single one of the people that have listened to this message grow and accept this and, you know, self-reflect, Lord. Help us and guide us in the rest of our week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, everyone.